So everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Uh, because this is hello, hello from Helen O'Grady International India. And if, if in case you were waiting for the past few minutes uh, for us to go live, it's time to quickly get your fingers fast, message your family and friends that we are live. Quick, quick, quick. Let's have, let's have more and more, more the merrier for our live today. The talk show is going to be really, really amazing. You really don't want to miss this. So let me get started because this is a beautiful evening and I hope you have um, a nice cup of coffee with you. This is going to be an amazing, amazing half an hour to 40 minutes. Hope you're ready. Welcome everyone. This is Helena Grady, International India's Lights Camera Live. A very, very warm good evening to all our Facebook viewers tuning in. This is your host, I'm Soumya Vishnu. Today is a talk show that you don't want to miss, like I said. I mean it. Take my word for it. Message your friends and family and ask them to join right away. Helen O'Grady International India is live again. You know, you know about us. We are a 40 year old organization with a presence in over 40 countries worldwide. Our programs being offered in 80 different cities in India by our lovely franchisees. So shout out to all our franchisees over there. So as we have our viewers building, and it's very exciting, you know, to see that little number at the corner of um, our Facebook page where we have more and more viewers coming in. Uh, I know, I know the times have been tough and challenging. Uh, our real stage uh, uh, performance spaces, the, the stages, the performance spaces have been pa patiently waiting for us. But don't you think we have to return our favor to this ever patient stage? The proscenium, the arena, any, any performance space for that matter that can be converted into a stage, we must keep our promise back to this lovely space. How? By keeping our mind live with creative ideas that should be continuously spinning out, you know, uh, with lovely different things and ready to perform it too. You must be thinking, how? how? How is that even possible? Well, right here on the virtual stage that is created just for you all. And it's even got its virtual curtains, by the way, so that you can get a nice little curtain call up. And for anybody out there who would like to be a part of keeping any art form alive. So the Drama Personality 2021 was one such event. It was an online speech and drama event. Hundreds of enthusiastic performers from all age group ac across our country had participated for round one, which was called Changing the Narrative, an amazing topic called the India I Want to See. And my, what an amazing uh, uh, event that was. So we at HOGI, Helen O'Grady International, wanted to ensure that participants and students, everybody for that matter, learn and experience and enrich their knowledge along the way. And voila, began Helen O'Grady International India's Lights Camera Live talk show series, which has been bringing you and will continue to bring to you some amazing drama personalities, brilliant and amazing artists from across the globe. Oh yes, we learn from the very best. These esteemed artists are well known in their field of art and we want you all to learn and be inspired from them. So guys, drum roll and keep those claps going because we have with us over here, <laughs> welcome to our talk show, Marcus, and welcome to our talk show, Marie. Uh, a little uh, about uh, Marcus. He's an award-winning mime and sculpting artist from Switzerland. He has been teaching mime since 1994 to young students, adults, prison inmates, and psychiatric patients with his 
with his art form. Mind blowing. And I say this because we have experienced Marcus in India, in multiple cities across India. So I can't even tell you how I'm feeling to be able to see Marcus and Marie back again with us today. <laughs> Marcus co-founded the association Mama Fell. Am I saying this correct, Marcus? Is it Mama Fell? Mama Fell. Ah, uh, Mama Fele. Okay, I stand. I will correct myself. The association with Mama Fele, Spectacle Solidaire, which um, with which he took his performances to the forest tribes, uh, Himalayan village, the mount uh, mountain Andes, uh, and even slums around the world, and to various Aboriginal tribes throughout Asia and India. So, Marcus. I know we're gonna have an one amazing evening today. We're gonna witness some really, really out of the box things from you because I know I have witnessed your uh, mime performance on water conservation and afforestation when you had come in here and how you transform very, very simple, random, uh, not even, we won't even think about such objects, you know, to use in a performance and you transform them into something that can give, I don't know, you know, these goosebumps that we get. So um, why don't you uh, share a bit about what we are going to see um, in the two clippings that we're going to share. But first we'll hear from you and then we will play uh, a bit to let the audience, the Facebook viewers know. It's a Yes, um, yes. So um, thank you very much for this introduction. I'm very happy to be here with you. And um, the two little films you are going to see is the consequences of our travel. One thing really incredible we were uh, confronted after two years traveling with our family was to play for NGO around the whole world. And uh, we, we had, we, we received a very big shock because we saw that this NGO were healed 85% uh, of them by women, very strong women. And so this was a very fantastic uh, uh, discovery. And um, the pictures you will see in the two video is a show called Women, which is a lot of testimony from a lot of girls, of young women, of strong old, older women, who have given their uh, life and commitment for other people on social ways, on environment or, or culture of education. And I really wanted to thank all these people from the inspiration they give me around these years. And for this, I collected, because I love to build objects with my own hands, I collected a lot of objects all around the world. And when I came back to Switzerland, I started to think back to the person who gave me a strong impression. And I built this sculpture, 10 different characters. And every character represents a very strong uh, item, a very strong subject mm -hmm. about uh, the conditions of women, girls around the world. And especially also about the right and the non-right they are confronted with. So this is women on a very poetic way. So you oh. will uh, discover some images about this show and the way I built the sculpture. Amazing. I think uh, just those words um, have painted such a lovely picture for us, but I'm sure our Facebook viewers are uh, wondering what it looks like. You have now kept us, you know, waiting like, what, what is it about? Because you <laughs> truly did put it in a poetic uh, manner. So let's, uh, let's have a look at what uh, Marcus was talking about. While we are getting our videos prepped up, do share your comments um, on how you're feeling by watching our lovely, lovely talk show, let's watch this. Il faut euh, trouver des astuces pour que les charnières soient solides, qu'elles tiennent le mouvement. Quand on bouge, quand on soulève, quand on porte, quand on laisse tomber, il faut que les sculptures puissent résister. d'un bateau, pof, 
Et puis ce mât, il se transforme. Tous les objets se transforment par métamorphose et ça devient un cerf-volant. Voilà. Et ce cerf-volant, il commence à voler et il devient le souvenir d'un petit enfant qui jouait peut-être avec ce cerf-volant. Donc, oui, euh, pourquoi ce spectacle autour des femmes Parce qu'on s'est rendu compte, après 5 ans de voyage, que plus de 85% des, des associations qui nous recevaient, qui nous faisaient jouer, on va dire, dans des coins complètement fous de la planète, soit avec des éducateurs de rue, soit dans le milieu de, des écoles de l'éducation, ou soit dans le milieu de la culture et puis de l'environnement, et bien 85% elles sont tenues par des femmes. Donc c'est elles qui tiennent, qui relèvent, qui construisent, qui aident les gens, qui viennent en aide et puis qui ont des idées assez incroyables. Et ça, ça nous a complètement impressionnés. Et à travers leurs associations, on a rencontré plein de femmes, de jeunes filles qui étaient aidées par ces associations. Et ce spectacle, en fait, il est né par les témoignages que ces personnes, en fait, elles nous rendaient en voyant nos spectacles de voyage. 5, 4, 3, 2 000, 12 000 pesos Et avec tous ces bouts d'histoire, et en ramenant euh, toutes sortes d'objets, des masques, des instruments de musique, euh, des, des, des morceaux de cuir, des morceaux de racines, des cornes de yak, euh, du ladak, des, des, des queues de yak, et bien tout ça, on a transformé ça en objet de scène qui parle de ces femmes. Je m'appelle Fatouma. J'ai 10 ans. Ana Carmelita de Trabajo de Vecinos Trabajadores de la Caída Social Paraguay. Ah Bonjour Aline Entrez seulement Donc Women, c'est vraiment un témoignage et un hommage à toutes ces femmes exceptionnelles qu'on a rencontrées et qui font euh, du travail exceptionnel, euh, on va dire, d'aide pour les autres. Après, comment j'ai dit aussi Lovely. So that was um, a detailed uh, insight into how and uh, how he made these, these sculptures and gave life to them. We have another video that will give you close up shots, um, a close appearance on each of these sculptures that were used in the mime act itself. Let's take a quick look at that.
And oh my, so we now got a chance to see some of these objects up close, but we are very lucky because we are going to watch some of these sculptures being put together maybe, or in a particular act, because Marcus is going to take us through a live performance. So Marcus, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So you are here in a little room and I have some uh, sculpture that I will show you with movements to let you see how from a sculpture you can transmit to give life to an object. So the first um, object I created is a special character who has three met mot um, metamorphoses in the show. The, you see, this part is a horn from a yak that I found at 5,000 meters in the mountain Ladakh. And I found also two tails from a yak and a, a mask uh, on a market in, um, in the city, uh, the main city of Ladakh. And I put them, I arranged them on the, the mask, but the first uh, entrance of this object is not a mask, it is a book. Oh. Ah. I'm on a horse, you see? The horse, the yak tail and the horn, is a horse and the horse in the show <laughs> is doing quite crazy thing. Later, I put my horse on the ground and it, uh, there are some other things, and the horse comes upward. And I change the position of the tails and I put them in another part of the mask. And look, the horse now with the mouth of a woman transform itself to um, a fairy figure, which is quite a god or something that's strange, a strange character, which I will walk on a certain way. And using it not in front of me, but on another way. Look. I use my body on a, another way to use the mask on the opposite side. And so the, the horse becomes a woman, a special woman, which is quite an idea of a special God who uh, will speak and ask some um, imaginary question to all the different characters who will appear in the show. And I show you now some characters I built in the women show. So I put this back and one character is this working girl, very simple. And what do you see on her back? I show you, I put her here. This is a coconut who come from a tree from the Eastern island and I, Cut it and in the coconut, I put a little um, head of a baby. And with a magnet, I put this on her back like this. And suddenly, you can imagine two images. Oh, it is a young girl with her brother, as we can see in South America or India. Or maybe more dramatic, it is a young mother, 12 years old, maybe with her own baby. So it gives also directly uh, a theme about the conditions for, 
who are some uh, girls in the world. And she can move maybe very simply, maybe from the hard work she's doing. I don't put her a lot of uh, possibility. She can only walk very simply. And I will show you with two sticks that I put on her shoes. And often children who work very hardly have shoes who are not on the good size for them. So I give her my own shoes of my working place. So the contrast between a very thin body, very little and big shoes uh, and gives a more dramatic sensation of her fitness. And I move, I give her only that movement, very simple. And so she can walk on a very dramatic way, very simple, which enlarge her condition of um, under, of, uh, of a child who maybe uh, support a lot of work, too much work. And this was a character that I met in South America, in Paraguay. And she was dreaming her whole life to go to school. And she never could go to school for two reasons. Because in South America, as in India, we can see that a lot of schools are, you have to have money, private school. Um, and she could not afford this. But her whole life, she dreams about a ferry, an education ferry. And the education ferry, I will show it to you. I was asking myself, how can I represent uh, props, who is the incarnation of the, the wish to go to school. So I thought I have to use material which are only used on a school. It means pen, uh, to do the pen, um, things to uh, calculate mathematics and so on. And now you will see. So she is dreaming about her education fairy and this look this is a mathematic thing that we use on the blackboard and i use it i create uh, a site and the head magnet here with another part you see to calculate angles or round things I use it for mouth. And on the other side, you have a blackboard, green board. In India, sometimes we found green boards more than blackboards. I can remember in schools. So suddenly she got a mouth. And these are uh, sticks, writing sticks. And I create hats. And, and this one. Was, I know in Switzerland we had to uh, build to do some circle on the blackboard for the mathematics. And these are now the arms of my lady. Look, arms, hands, here and there. And what you saw in the video, the scene before, I had a crazy helmet. And the helmet, what he, does he have as hair? He has pens and these pens becomes the pens of my fair lady my education lady and i will show you to build you completely so this happens in the show with my two musicians a violinist and an academist who gives a very strong impulse and rhythm to the music and i build so on like a drawing, the most named uh, uh, face of um, maîtresse d'école, uh, teacher. Look, and all the pens are becoming the bright, full smile of a teacher. And it's not finished, because if you want to be in a moving show, the props have 
to have also a possibility to move. So the child who is approaching and creating this uh, fairy lady can is very happy and with joy he danced behind the moving hair. Look, at the end, when it's built, I can just go up. And you have now the image of a joyful um, imaginary uh, teacher. So this is a way to show how through poetry, you can let imagine a dream by another child, another girl, something in this case untouchable, but real for us. So I put this character back and I show you another character. So here. I will show you now the Indian family. We went in Rajasthan, in very traditional areas of Rajasthan. And I was really impressed of all the habits, and especially one um, on a way dramatic uh, thing that the girls were living, they could not choose how much children they got, when they wanted to have children, with whom, and so on. And with our Peter and other friends we met in India, it was very interesting. We had sometimes a very uh, nice discussion about the parents in modern cities who comes now to. Uh, give more freedom for the choice of the girls. But they still are uh, bounded a little bit with the weight of the tradition, which is quite normal. You come from a, a way more tradition and you go still to more maybe free uh, thoughts. And we, what we, uh, we saw between uh, Arpita and her, uh, her girl, we saw it strongly in Rajasthan, a lot of girls of 15, 18, 20 years old, they were fighting against the thought of her parents to be more free, to choose when they want to study, to choose who, with whom they want to live, to choose to live maybe with somebody of another uh, relation of them, so on. And so I represent actually a very traditional family on a very funny uh, way, a chicken family, which have a lot of babies and all the babies, they cannot speak, they are just open eyes, they have to say okay to the parents. And the wife is also going uh, to what is saying the very little man, I represent very little and a bit uh, authoritarian. And this is the father. It's a little trumpet of Buddhism, trumpet from the from Ladakh. And it's very thin, so it's hard to play. And it's a mask, eyes and hair, which is actually to wash, to clean the floor. The father, the mother, and had a lot of beautiful colors, tissues, incredible. I paint the floor with some colors of India. Look, this is one of the multicolors of India, orange, beautiful orange. And with this, I can just go around my character and on a very simple way, very fast, I can have here an Indian family and with all her little babies. Yeah, like eggs of a chicken. And more of this, because this girl is having children, maybe every year I represent it with a lot of eggs and uh, babies in the form of an egg. And um, it's quite a very funny scene and quite also dramatic. And actually, the scene is as if I gave the opportunity at one of these girls to speak to us. And this scene is giving a microphone to her, saying, what, what are you feeling inside? Can you tell us about your family? 
And the scene goes about the whole family, the construction of the family. And I will show you how I built for this family the motor of commodity, um, having children, the maternity. I found in Asia a nice umbrella. Oof. And look, I put some feeders, ostrich feeders, on the umbrella. And this umbrella, river, river, can come, for example, only the character and express a big vault. Uh, how could we want? And with two little umbrellas from uh, Laos, you have here the the two um, la, la grossesse, la grossesse? Pregnancy. So pregnancy behind this big uh, what? So very fast, it's you see uh, a family with crazy objects who can represent pregnancy, the tradition, the babies, the life, uh, and things like this, and with uh, colors and um, tissue of India. I will show you. Uh, I will show you a, a last object because Mary told me maybe I speak too much. Uh, a last poetry object. In this struggle, we were confronted also to inequality and racism for people who were suffering from racism. And I said to myself, how can I represent this through an image, through masks, through um, a moving objects? And in Ladakh, I find a lot of different uh, masks. And I create a little car, I would say, and on this car, you will see here, I bring it here, there are some body, some characters that I let come on stage like this. All these characters have different colors, different shape of uh, faces, as if they were coming from different countries. And all these persons are living together, or living in the same place, or living in the same country, with tension or not. And to represent this idea that we can live together, I created other faces to enlarge the idea idea that we can mix the colors. So my masks actually can be cut, and I can put the eyes of one mask on another one. So, and to see if these new images, and what I'm discovering on a poetic way, which is quite nice, that these are as if we have more diversity, more differences in the possibility of biology to create new uh, other uh, human beings. And from men, I decided to do further, to create women. And I find some flowers, and on each mask, I put them hair, a new hair, a flower hair. And you discover that in this metamorphosis, all the, the man becomes different hair, become uh, have different colors, different shape, different form, and can also let the imagination to be uh, transformed to women. Just to say that actually on a big ID, we are really close, men and women. And why this, have we this discrimination about our colors, our shape, or that women are more discriminated than men? Because when you play just with Images, you see that everything is possible. Yes. 
So maybe the time is now um, short. Uh, in the background, I will not uh, go further, but just notice that it's the last thing I want to tell you. I was really uh, interested, I was really intrigued in India with all these women who were working on garbage places in also South America. And I wanted to do a last image in the short, a sort of silent cry of all these different women, which are uh, um, oppressed. And uh, we said with a, a friend of mine who is a sculpture, we have to find in Switzerland also garbage and built these characters with this idea of garbage. So we took some beer cannons, we took the color away, and we cut them with nails, uh, scissor. And she created a lot of different uh, faces, very light in aluminum, of all these women who are appearing at the end of the show, like lantern, luminous lantern, and they can't stage, and in silence, they just look to everybody and say, and so on. What? What are you thinking? What are you doing? What, can, what is our place? What is our place all together? And this is the end of the show, Women. So you have now seen a little bit the material I'm using, and also a little bit the idea of the poetic way to use object like an extension to the mind actor. Yes, I think that's it. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh my goodness! I am speechless. And I must share with you the hundreds and hundreds of comments that is coming across on our, our uh, Facebook, from our Facebook viewers. Uh, the, the viewers at, at uh, one point, we had um, about um, 50 to 100 people watching us. And I tell you, I, I was following the comments too, but I couldn't tear my eyes away from the screen. And I'm pretty sure everybody watching us would have felt the same way. Marcus, we could have continued to listen to you for another good two hours, I assure you. I truly assure you that. The way you engaged our senses, the eyes, uh, the feeling that we felt uh, watching the transformation in each of the sculptures, the celebratory sounds that I for sure kept making, I had to consciously put myself on mute so that I do not interrupt your speaking and I'm very sure our viewers did the very same. Each sculpture coming alive, there was this brilliant fusion that happened between objects and mime where you put the characterization of that character into you when you walked that little girl with um, the baby brother on the back uh, there was a, a particular way which you embodied which made us feel ah okay she must be carrying a, a bit of a weight she's wearing two bigger shoes um, so we were able to see that through your uh, body language uh, uh, from, from uh, you know, so there was an image of the girl, but then there was the life from you. Uh, so each of these sculptures, Marcus, were like a cocoon to butterfly. Uh, the umbrella was hypnotic. Uh, I, I truly felt the colors were, you know, uh, reminds even for us, uh, you know, it was like, ah, Rajasthan. And I'm sure the next time we see plastic bottles, we will surely thank every person who works on that line to collect, segregate, and make our uh, streets as clean as they are. We are going to remember that the message that you have um, shared with us. So, um, Marcus, <laughs> I have I have millions of questions actually, personally, but I'm going to <laughs> I, I'm going to ask you um, a couple of questions. Um, I know there was a very uh, right balance of sculpture and mime happening. Uh, when did you first come across the art of mime? Uh, who taught you or inspired you to pursue this art form? Uh, I went to Paris to study with a very famous French mime, which is now dead, but uh, he's called Marcel Marceau. And I was 24 years old and he was 70 years old. He was still very active. 
And he is really in the spore, in the trace of Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin developed this uh, body language in a mute uh, cinema. So he had to invent a way to express um, very strongly, very precisely his emotion for the screen of cinema. And Marcel Marceau did a little bit the same thing, but in theater. And he was very, he spoke uh, very, each time we had a less with him, he spoke also about uh, Charlie Chaplin. And what Marcel Marceau gave me um, is a very important sensation, which is called the suspension. Uh, suspension is a way as if you, the weight of your body is a little bit uh, higher than the natural weight of your body. As if you are a little bit flying in a suspension. And so when you are just uh, imaginary uh, space uh, above the, the ground, also your eyes, your body has to be precise and everything um, is like in a different density. And to be a mind you have really, uh, I would say the specificity of mine is like um, a suite of following of different pictures. And this picture with um, a rhythm becomes a line of movement. The dance in contrary is more a direct line of drawing the space. The mind is more a, a following pictures of space. And that's why I developed, I think I asked myself this question this morning before I, I spoke to you, why am I developing so much objects? Because for me, first of all, I like to build things with my hands mm. and the object is um, extension with in pictures, in fixed picture, but some uh, articulation where as you saw the little girl, she can just move on one way, the right. horse, uh, is moving through my movements oh, yes. and so on. That was brilliant. The horse um, is something uh, that I had in my mind, but there were so many other characters that came in that I forgot to mention the horse altogether. Um, how a, a simple object can take many different facets. You know, they had di different faces to them. Uh, a horse, a person, a woman. Um, mm -hmm. So that was yeah. very nice. Um, so in these tough times, we are in a, in a pandemic, and um, I know we've enjoyed hosting you uh, over here with us, uh, uh, such a marvelous time that we had months and months together. How are you managing to keep your art alive during this tough two years that we are having, the 2020 and 21 now going on? It was a very tough moment, a very shock, shocking moment, uh, deeply, uh, personally inside. Because in one second, uh, artists um, have lost everything. Mm. The job was from full time to zero, oh very my. zero. Mm. And to, uh, to take this consciousness, uh, it was a first hard, hard impression. Secondary, mm. I have a, a two days job in, on school in Switzerland, where I offer my service to, for ch little children who have some problems of confidence of autism or, or lack of uh, expression of confidence. And with my expression tools, my expression things like this, I work specifically with them on the five uh, sense, uh, looking, hearing, touching. And with the coronavirus, all this was cut too. Yeah. So with a mask, you have no expression. <laughs> And so the little children, five years old, cannot see what I want to uh, tell him. And uh, I enlarged the expression so he can really uh, understand me. This was not possible. I could not touch him. I could not do acrobatic. I could not help him uh, with his body. I could not uh, doing um, specific uh, cooking in a very funny way to mm. let them feel all the different feelings to get the words outside. So, on art side and on uh, the school side, I was cut completely down. I had the feeling I was like an underground people, somebody who had to cross the seas and and uh, uh, fear. Uh, and I felt very bad, I have to say. And to stay connected with the five senses, I went a lot of the nature. I did a lot of bicycles. Mm. And I, then I started after a few months to work my choreographic 
in the nature, in the fields, in the landscapes. Mm. And I developed some other flying objects mm. and I create some choreographic, but I filmed myself in the nature, on the trees, uh, of things like this. Oh, so lovely. this was the way I, I went through. And also I, 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 I started to do little films uh, to, to work on the lovely. iMovie program. So yes, I enlarge oh. also my technical tools. Oh, <laughs> lovely. I think, yeah, I think we are all uh, expanding our perception or our ideas to the tech world and trying to see how we can yeah. fit in. And uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing that. So um, what would you like to share to the young and upcoming generation right now, the young children who are aspiring performers and artists? Is there one experience which will really inspire them and say, ah, yes, I'm on the right track. I'm gonna pursue what I'm feeling. I, I would say to the young generation, keep curiosity alive, keep curiosity all against all adversity, all problems you will face in your life, problems of money, problem of space to, mm. to find a space to rehearsal, problem of uh, uh, passing the borders, problem of all whatever you will face, just go with perseverance, uh, perseverance. Yes. go on. And beyond, I would say beyond also materialism, uh, think for me, Art is a nourishment, a food for the soul. Uh, and it stimulates a lot of imagination. For me, it is, I, I would say to the young uh, people, and imagination is like, I would say, a muscle. And you have to train your muscle every day. And imagination, you train it every day. And when you cross your um, tools with people from neighbor uh, tools like for me, acrobatic dancers, musicians, uh, art plastic, of the painters. Of, then the, this magic thing of imagination jumps from one to the other like ping pong. And you will never imagine how the ideas are flowing through the space. So just go and find uh, other artists to collaborate. Go through uh, <laughs> this, uh, this um, like fear and just go on, curiosity. Oh. And um, yeah. I I'm going to hold on um, to that uh, where you said using imagination as a muscle and we need to work it every single day so that we create that muscle memory and it becomes an integral part. <gasps> oh my. Uh, I I'm speechless. I'm struggling with words right now because I'm trying to absorb such a deep, deep thought that you shared, which um, we are all going to keep in our mind. So you actually answered uh, the next question too, which, which uh, would be, what is the secret to become as inspiring and mesmerizing as you are? And you <laughs> gave away some of, you know, the things that you keep, not materialistic, perseverance and keeping to, but apart from that, is there any other secret that you want to share so that we can uh, build yes, up the secret? Uh, if you are going to have a, a physical work like Dance of Mind, you have to have really an appetite for moving. Ah. And then I would say um, trying to get uh, uh, education about movement uh, mm -hmm. on a traditional art or a uh, movement art to shape your body through the technique uh, on a certain level. As a pianist will uh, have a technical uh, sh uh, education, uh, 10 years, same for a dancer, same for mine, uh, actor. And little by little, you take this and on the other side, you develop your own ideas. And then upon over time, you confront your new tools from the contemporary world with the traditional uh, um, education. And it brings some friction, but it brings also some collaboration of some mm. fantastic marriage. And so tradition can, uh, I think for me, evolve with modernity. So it's not two things against, it's two uh, forces who has to dance together and go further. Let the contemporary artists go further. Oh, this is, 
Uh, I'm I'm just hanging <laughs> on to each word uh, you're saying, Marcus, um, because it's it's such pearls of wisdom that you're sharing that we can apply not just to somebody who is interested in in mime and sculptures, but in general for any performance based or any profession for that matter. Such amazing words. So um, the 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 thing that you said about uh, observing and taking instances from what we see, like how women in inspired you through your journey uh, to so many countries and you wanted to represent that and keep that alive, that memory alive. And what better way to do it in the way you showed it to us. In fact, you have even put that into our minds and your memory is now become our, uh, uh, like a painting or a movie for us. So uh, thank you so much. I have, I have, just one, one last question. And I think personally also, I would um, love to know this because I've met you so many years back uh, as, um, uh, as the mime artist that we saw for, uh, for the, the pieces that you showed us. In these years, how have you evolved even more as an artist with the passage of time, with um, the time that has elapsed from, you know, maybe since the time you start, started mime, to you know, when we have seen you yeah. and now. Yes, it's a good question. Um, I'm now 54 years old, and um, uh, I have been faced some great, uh, nice moment in life, uh, having two children with my uh, love, Mary, uh, have education with them, um, and so birth, and also uh, facing um, some sickness from France, a death from France, um, old person um, uh, going away, uh, mm. passing away, and things like this. And when you think about all this, one question as an artist you ask yourself is, who am I, and what, which trace am I letting for other person and for the the luggage I've collected and. Um, also, it's uh, back uh, thinking about all the person in my youth, in my young man life, in my older man life, the person who helped me to, to uh, how to say, to support me uh, in benevolence, in knowledge, in love, um, all these gifts, human gifts, I have for my, myself, I have to give it back. I have to share it back. I think this is the sense of life. Life is like a current, a flow. You jump in the flow with a lot of fears and the, the adult world helps you to face your fears and to transform as the sculpture in metamorphosis, to transform your fears in forces. And actually the world is a world of gifts. And I would like to, to go this line on, share these gifts on a universal way because I think higher than, above religions, above difference of ideology, above politics, above all the things who are, let us be different people in different countries. Um, I think we are on a planet where the best thing is to share gifts because we are a gift of life and uh, we will give this energy to create other gifts. That's it. <laughs> so the mind is a silent, cry about this, a poetic cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a beautiful, beautiful uh, cry that is going to, it has left an indelible mark in our hearts, I assure you, cannot be rubbed off, we can't forget it. And uh, uh, like me, I hope everybody is going to uh, note it down, mark this day, mark the day Marcus left a mark on us. <laughs> um, and I would also like to share with our Facebook viewers, we are still going strong. We have 42 viewers uh, with us. I know it's a long program, but thank you for sticking with us, my dear viewers. I was inspired when I was watching the, uh, the, the performance. I was looking around for things around my house. What can I create, um, you know, with the simple things that I have? Um, what can I do? So sparked an idea. Please, my Facebook viewers, share with us if you want to give life to one such sculpture. Do make it and send us a picture and we will have the inspiration courtesy to Marcus and we will share it on our page to show how Marcus has inspired this thought in us. 
<laughs> so, uh, so we will uh, we request you all. In fact, I'm going to get to it the minute this meeting is over because when it was happening, I had a coaster here, I had a lipstick here, and I was trying to see, oh, what can I do? Does this become a nose? Um, does this become, you know, the beard? Can I do something with it? So, <laughs> I'm going to hold on to that. I hope you do too, Marcus. Thank you so much for this lovely evening. You've shared such deep, honest insights about your work, about you as a person, Marcus and Marie. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm, I hope my dear Facebook viewers, you had an amazing time. Share in the comments and I thank everybody for leaving such amazing feedback for us. We are going to read it out to Marcus and Marie immediately after the live is over. Uh, but uh, keep, do keep sharing. And thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Everybody in the meeting, please stay back. We're only saying goodbye to our Facebook viewers. So see you in bye the bye. next talk show. This is bye from Marcus and Marie. Marcus and Marie, would thank you like you to say bye to our Facebook viewers? Bye. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye, India.